Hi everybody, I'm Trin Johnson and welcome to Dust in My Eye. Today I am going to be painting on the tins that I made to house my dried gouache palette. If you saw my video from uh, last Sunday, I think it was, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And if you didn't, I will show you. So here I have these two tins. They are business card holders. And I cut off the lip there and painted some white glossy um, enamel paint on the inside so I have some mixing space. And I did that on this one and I did that on this one. And this one is going to house my um, cool color palette and this one is going to house my warm color palette. So these are my palettes all filled waiting to get in their new homes. I'm going to set those aside and I am going to paint these with alcohol ink. Now I do this a lot. I have painted um, a lot of things with alcohol ink. Um, most recently I painted these two tins and there's a um, video about that. This is my Gonzai Tambi Art Nouveau watercolor set and the box came messed up so I found these tins on Amazon and put my paints in here and put sprayed that with white enamel and painted the top to coordinate with the colors of the paints within so I could tell which ones were in which box because it was a big set and I couldn't find something that would hold all of them in one case but I kind of like this I think it works really well so I'm doing a similar thing with my gouache and I might um, change out some colors once I paint for a little while but it's very easy to do that because they're metal pans and they just hook to this magnet which is a peel and stick magnet, which I'm going to put in here um, once I get them painted. I didn't see the point in having those in there while I was trying to paint them. So right now I'm gonna take them off and start with a coat um, in both directions. One, I go in one direction, let it dry, sand it, go in the other direction, let it dry, and then sand it, and then I can paint on them with alcohol ink. And I'm using Kills 2. It is an ex interior exterior primer. It is water soluble, water you know, water based. So um, it works really, really well for alcohol ink. And there are other things you can use, but this is what I consistently use. So. Right now, I'm going to tape off one of them, and then I will tape the other one off um, real quick, too. I don't think there's much to tape, honestly. Uh, sometimes I don't even bother taping to do this Kills 2 part because I can usually paint it so that it doesn't um, go off the top. But right now, I am just going to run a, a piece of tape along this edge because that is the only edge that could be a problem <laughs> because I can paint it like that. And then these three edges, I'm not going to worry about. Well, maybe I'll put a little piece of tape there. Can't hurt because I don't want this painted. Don't want the um, handle painted. So I'll just do that. So that one's done. Let's do the other one. Now I do have two other um, videos where I do this sort of thing. So um, if you like watching this one, you can look those up and see what I did on those. Um, the one is the one I just showed you, and there's another one where I painted just a little, little bit on a little bitty tin um, that I use for my alcohol ink palette that I have a video on, that's that video. 
where I have a dried alcohol ink palette and for plein air purposes and such and it works really really nicely and I really have fun using it because there's not a lot to, to get going on it so if we're like waiting at our table for food or waiting for a table somewhere I can pop that out and paint with it really quickly. Getting my church key to open my can. Now, I did not use this that long ago, but just the same, I am going to give it a stir because that's always a good idea. And, uh, so I have this little brush with an angle. I prefer this brush for anything I'm using this kind of paint for. Um, I like it when I'm painting a wall in my home. I like it for cutting in, not for painting the whole wall, but for cut, doing the cutting in. I find that I have a lot more control with this short little handled brush. So... Uh, that's what I tend to buy and tend to have on hand. So I am just going to give this coat in this direction. If I get a little um, inside the tape there, it's not a big deal. Honestly, it might have worked easier if I didn't tape it, so we'll see. I'm just going to let that dry. I have one of these that I painted for my husband and one that I painted for myself that has our one of our travel watercolor kits in it. Now that one painted much smoother, so let me let me just see if I can get this a little bit better. And I have been known to increase or decrease the drying time by throwing a hair dryer on things like this when I'm about to paint them. I have not noticed a problem because of that. So I may very well do that again. I'm having more trouble with the tape on this one. But these are just for me. If I was um, doing them for my Etsy shop, I am a little more careful to make sure everything is as nice as it can be. So I tend to pull out um, some press and sealed um, plastic wrap to wrap my brush in in between coats because I'm not going to wash my brush between coats. It, it goes pretty quick. So I am going to come back when they're dry. I like to go the short way first and have my final coat be lengthwise. I think I get a better coat lengthwise. You will not be able to see all these little um, imperfections once the ink is on there. It just isn't going to be noticeable. This is the part that I always forget I should probably put gloves on just because this stuff is kind of a pain to get off. I 
I don't know why. Okay, well, I'll let that dry and then we'll sand it and then we can paint on it. So I pulled out some colors and did some swatching and I've come up with my warm colors and my cool colors and alcohol ink that I'm going to use to paint on here. And that's what I'm going to start with. Um, these are dry now. So I'm going to take the tape off and do a little sanding and probably a little... Uh, tweaking <laughs> like there's a little paint here oh that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be This has a, a little uh, white on it already from um, do that very well from the enamel that we spray painted. Now I'm going to sand them a little bit. Okay, I am going to put some gloves on and then get started. I really dislike wearing these gloves, but I know that with these little bitty things, I'm probably going to get ink all over me. So I will just start with them on. <laughs> All right, let us do, let us do the bright one first. And I'm thinking roses. So um, there will be some muting going on. And I'm just going to quietly try and dive into this. And uh, hopefully it will be fun to watch.
Okay. Well, it was a little bit of a struggle. These um, tins, the way that they're prepped, don't really like painting um, the roses on them. They're, I had to kind of fudge it a little bit. But that's okay. I don't really care. I, what I ended up with was a warm color palette and a cool color palette, which was my goal. So um, if they're not um, perfect roses, um, I, I would want more from a piece of paper. Let's just say that. Then I would expect to have them work better. But uh, for these instances, this is this is fine. Let's clean off my excess. And I'm going to stick the um, magnet down. And then I can use it. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I have to um, spray. Oh, let's see, it got on there. I have to spray my um, alcohol ink to seal them. And I usually do like two coats of Kamar, and then I do a coat of a um, couple coats of ultraviolet um, Krylon. And then I do a couple coats of Minwax spray, um, clear gloss. And then, see that one didn't leak. And then I'm done. So uh, I might try and get that paint off of there. I think that's going to need acetone. So let's peel and stick these puppies and get going. Now the paint did crack a little bit. I've been tweaking it all week, but honestly, I don't really care if it's cracked a little bit. I think once I start using it, it will be fine. Um, this is this one. So I am not going to stress over it. If I have to worry about a paint palette being messy, I won't ever paint with it, so that just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to put my magnet down. There we go. Now, this red one is popping out of its tray, and that is a different story. It is not allowed to do that. I haven't really had much trouble with them doing that, but I'm just going to wet the back of it. Plunk it back down. You can always come back in and add some paint. It's all a grand experiment. But I, I really do like using these palettes with the big open space. So there's that one. Oh, it got in there. How did that do that while I was doing that? Let's add a little bit more. I must have been a little overzealous with my uh, cleaning, which is funny because this is the one that leaked. So I don't know why I got that like that. This is why I like to do backgrounds that are really, oh, that is not clean, really, really modeled because um, when they're really um, distinctively outlined kinds of things, then if you have to refix anything, come back in, it's very noticeable. And um, when it's like stamped like this, you can just come back in and it's not a problem. A little green down there. Oh, 
Okay, let's set him aside. I could touch that up, but for my own purposes, I just don't think I'm going to bother because it's going to get full of paint. That will probably stain a bit to a certain extent, and I just don't see the point in worrying about it. Ah. Red is still a little gooey. See my black one there. He's a little cracked right now. But I think once I start using them too, they'll be better, which is why I want to get this ink part done. But there we go. Warm colors, cool colors. I'm going to spray them, and then I can play with them. So I hope you got something out of this. I know it was um, a little chaotic back and forth, but a lot of times I find with the alcohol ink, that's, that's the way it is. For me to get something I like, um, I might play with this a little bit more and try and get a little more of the red in there. But uh, all in all, it's it's fine the way it is. So if you got anything out of this, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, hit subscribe. And if you want to be notified, hit the cute little bell. And you can always buy me a cup of coffee if you want to help me on this um, channel to keep making videos. There's a link in the description. And I love to see comments, love to answer comments, so that would be great too. And please check out my Etsy shop where I have prints of my artwork along with cute little monsters and the little tins that I make for sale. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.